Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today, I'm going to give you some tips that will help you use Lightroom much more effectively and efficiently. And all these tips have a theme. That theme is they all involve the Alt Option key. It's, of course, the Alt key if you're using a PC and the Option key if you're using a Mac. And every single one of these tips involve pressing in that key to do something. And we're going to start out right away with the spot removal tool. And on this specific image, I have a lot of spots I removed, as you could see here. Well, let's just say I want to remove these. Now I could click on one, hit the delete key, and do that one by one. But a faster way is to hold in that Alt Option key. And you'll see when you do that, the cursor turns into a little pair of scissors. What you could do then is just draw, in this case, a rectangle over all those spots I removed and let go. And I'll remove them all at the same time. Now we'll move on to the graduated filter. Now you probably know that if you want to apply a graduated filter, you could just click on the image and either drag up or down. In this case, I'll drag down and you're applying the filter. Now I have exposure all the way down just so you could see it. But what I'm doing when I do this the conventional way is as soon as I clicked and started to drag, the top line stays stationary, and then the other two lines move away from the top line, and they move away from one another as well. Well, this way of applying the graduated filter might be a little more cumbersome if you want that center line in a very specific spot. For example, on this image, I might want it right on the horizon. So I could kind of guess, go up here and then drag down, but then, you know, then I have to, you know, drag it and move it and stuff. An easier way, hold the Alt Option key, and I'll go up here to show you. When I hold that key in and then click and drag, you're leaving the center line stationary and you're drawing the other two lines away from it. And sometimes this is a little bit easier uh, to apply the filter when you want that center line in a specific location on the image. Now you could combine the Shift key with this, and when you do that, you'll draw it perfectly horizontal. So in this case, if I do want it right on the horizon line, I would hold in the shift key and the option key. The shift key keeps it perfectly horizontal and the option key keeps that center line right where I clicked and the other two lines get drawn away from it. So that's a tip for using the graduated filter. Now the radial filter, uh, similarly the default behavior for this, if I just click and drag, you're actually going to drag it out from the center. So from the point I clicked, you're drawing it out. If you want to draw it out, maybe you have it up in the corner here and you want the radio filter to not uh, go off the edge of the image. What you could do is hold the option key in on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, click and drag, you know, draw it out from that edge. So instead of drawing it out from the center, you're drawing it out from that edge. So that's another way to do it. Now I must confess, I never really use that method with the radio filter but it is there and available if you need it. Let's go on to the brush. Um, you probably know with the brush. Let's say I still have exposure all the way down. If I paint, right, I painted a line. Well, if I went too far and I want to erase part of this, I could go over here and click on the erase brush like this and erase it. But a faster, easier way is just hold in the Alt Option key. And when you do that, you'll just jump over to the erase brush while you're holding in that key. And you could come in and erase part of what you want. Let go of the Alt Option key and you return to the brush you were using. Now in this case, of course, we don't want that. So that's uh, some tips with the Alt Option key for the local adjustment tools. Let's move on a little bit and go to the basic tab. Um, right here, like you see where it says tone? Let's say I want to reset all of these sliders. If I hold on the Alt Option key, it says reset tone. So I could just click there once and reset them. But here's a little tip. Uh, this is available everywhere, you know, in all the panels. If you noticed, when I held the Alt Option key in, it says Reset Tone. It also says Reset Pre Presence. If I go over here, it says Reset up here. I could reset the tone curve. If I go here, I could reset Luminance. I could reset Saturation, and so on. It's everywhere. As long as I, all I got to do is hold in that Alt Option key, and I could reset parts or all of these different tabs that are in Lightroom. But, Take note of where it set it. For instance, I held in that Alt Option key. It says Reset Tone. I could click once and reset the tone. A faster way is just double click on Tone and I'll reset it. So wherever 
you hold that Alt Option key and take note of where it says Reset in case, it, in this case, it says Reset Presence, then you don't even have to hold the Alt Option key and you just could just double click right on, in this case, Presence and reset it as fast as that. So that's a little tip for resetting parts of these different tabs that are in Lightroom with that Alt Option key. And in many cases, you don't even have to hold it in. You just have to double click uh, on the word that gets modified when you hold in that Alt Option key. All right, adjusting tone. Now uh, this is one that's like taught in Lightroom 101, right? With the whites and blacks, most notably, uh, if you want to get a white point, you hold in the Alt Option key. And when you click on the white slider, the screen will turn black. And wherever color is bleeding through, that means you're starting to clip that channel. In this case, I'm starting to clip the red channel. If I keep moving it to the right, you'll see blue is coming through. I see a tiny bit of green uh, in one spot come through. And if I keep going, you'll see white is showing. That means I'm clipping all three channels. And usually you might want to back that off until you're not clipping or minimally, minimally clipping. So that's one little tip. And the same thing for blacks, when you hold that Alt Option key in and click down, this time the screen turns white. And when you move it, this case, to the left, you'll see colors bleed through. You're clipping those channels. Where black is bleeding through, you're clipping all three channels. And you could adjust that accordingly. But that Alt Option key also works on the other sliders as well. If you click on Exposure, same thing. If you click on contrast, it doesn't do it. But if you click on the highlights, it does. And if you click on shadows, it does. It doesn't do it on texture and clarity, but it will do it on dehaze. Because with dehaze, you could sometimes clip. Like I'm clipping shadows going that way. I'm clipping highlights going that way. Well, not really, but you can. So uh, that is a little tip. Hold in that Alt Option key when you're adjusting. Most often we do it with just the whites and the black sliders, not all of the different sliders I mentioned. That would be exposure, highlight shadows, whites, blacks, and dehaze. But uh, take it, you know, and use it to get a really nice, accurate uh, white and black point. That way when you print the image, you're sure that you're not, like if you're clipping the highlights, um, when you print the image, you wouldn't put any ink down on the paper at all. If you're clipping the shadows, you're just putting black ink down. No detail will come out in those areas. So that's something to consider. Let's go on to the tone curve. Uh, let's say it's a tone curve. If I just grab it and I start moving it, like I could just move it like crazy, right? What if I just want a really small micro movement? Hold in that Alt Option key. Then you can see it's just like just moving slightly so that's just something to consider like I could go down here and I could go like real without holding that alt option key in but as soon as I hold it in it just barely moves so that's something you could do to get a better maybe more minute uh, adjustment using the tone curve uh, works on all the curves uh, by the way too so it works on all of them now we'll go on to the HSL color there's really nothing here except that reset uh, trick I showed you before. If you hold in the Alt Option key, you get reset saturation. You could single click there, or you could just double click on it and it will reset it. So that's that tip there. If we go on to color grading, this is another one where you need, if you need a really minute, um, specific small movement, uh, you could come in and hold that Alt Option key because typically you could just grab this center circle and just move it like, you know, a lot. But if you hold that Alt Option key in, it barely will move. It takes a lot of mouse movement to move it. So you could kind of dial in maybe a more exact um, adjustment using the Alt Option key with color grading. Let's move on to detail. This is another one that <clears throat> in Lightroom 101 is taught. When you want to sharpen an image, most often you're taught <clears throat> to just move the amount slider, then jump down to masking, hold that Alt Option key in. And when you do that, the screen will turn white. White means you're sharpening every single pixel. But as I move it to the right, you'll see black is starting to come through. Where it is black, I'm not sharpening those areas. And the reason why you would want a mask is quite often, uh, you'll get a lot of noise in the sky uh, on landscape images when you increase sharpening. So what you could do is use masking and you'll see most of the sky is now black. So I'm not sharpening most of the sky. I'm sharpening the edges of the sculpture, the grass, 
where sharpening is needed. I don't need sharpening up in that sky. So uh, what you're doing then is you're not introducing a lot of noise into the sky. But that Alt Option key works with all of the sliders. So if you hold it in and you click on sharpening, the image will turn monochrome. A lot of people find a monochrome image easier to sharpen than a color image. So if that's the case for you, try it. Uh, try holding that in. Similarly, you hold it in with radius and you'll get this kind of grayscale thing with edges. Um, and you could see that uh, you're just, as you're moving the radius up, you're just kind of getting those edges and you're increasing the area around the edge that you're sharpening or decreasing it if you move to the left. So that may help you adjust radius a little better. Detail, you get a similar uh, type screen and it is barely seen there. Uh, noise reduction, you hold it in. You can see you get that monochrome image again. Detail, nothing with that one. Contrast, nothing with that one. Color, nothing really with that one. Detail here, nothing with that one, and smoothness, nothing with that one. So with these three, when I said nothing, I should have said you're getting a monochrome image on all three of the luminance noise reduction sliders. That would be the luminance slider, the detail slider, and the contrast slider. So all of those will give you a black and white image while you're adjusting the slider as long as you're holding in that Alt Option key, whereas the color, obviously it's not gonna give you that because you're trying to get rid of uh, color noise. Now I wanna reset noise reduction, just double click on the word noise reduction, it resets it. Um, again, if you hold in the Alt Option key, it says reset noise reduction, you get single click. So whatever works for you to do that. So that is some tips holding that Alt Option key in for sharpening and noise reduction. Now lens corrections, there is uh, some Alt option tricks that you could do when you want to remove chromatic aberration. If you hold in the alt option key and you go on the amount, you see how you're getting this kind of weird look here? It's kind of telling you like what's being affected and then uh, by your adjustments. And you usually just want it to be like the edge of something. Now there's no chromatic aberration on this image, but this allows you to get it exactly where you need it. You see how I'm moving it around, increasing its width? Wherever it's dark is where I'm, um, I'm defringing. Wherever it's light, I'm not defringing. Or wherever it isn't dark is maybe a more accurate term. And you could do that, of course, with the other colors as well. And I actually have a video where I go in detail about how to defringe an image. And I'll have that link below. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this video because this is probably the most difficult alt option trick you could use in Lightroom and it would take me a long time to give you a proper demonstration and how to use it in this video. But uh, if you do have an image that has some stubborn chromatic aberration, definitely watch that video and I have it linked below. Now I'm going to reset this so I hold the Alt Option key. I could just single click on Defringe and it will work there. Um, I don't think it does anything with vignetting as I recall. Yeah, so nothing there. I'll reset that. So we'll close that down. We'll move on to transform. Now there's uh, things here with reset you could do. There's nothing that I know of with reset or with holding alt option key for any of these adjustments in here. Effects. If you just take the amount slider and move it slightly, let's say I want to put a darker vignette on this and I just move it slightly. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm putting it on there. Now I'm wondering about the midpoint and it's kind of hard to see. Well, all you got to do is hold that Alt Option key in, and then when I click on the slider, it will max out the amount temporarily so I could kind of see where I'm putting that midpoint. Same thing, hold in the Alt Option key for roundness, and it will max out the amount while I'm holding in the key so I could see what I'm doing. Same thing with feathering, and same thing for highlights. So that helps you better see it. Now I'll reset this. I'll hold in the Alt Option key. It says I could single click right there. If I was putting a white vignette, same thing. I would just move the amount slider so that it's a white vignette to the right, hold in that Alt Option key, and then it maxes it out temporarily as I move these sliders so I could better apply the vignette to my image. There's no Alt Option um, thing for using grain, so you, nothing there. And for calibration, there's no uh, tricks, Alt Option tricks there. So that's pretty much, I think, everything in the develop module uh, for Alt Option. 
If I missed anything, definitely let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think of these alt option tricks. Is it something you use all the time or something you're going to use? Did you learn anything in this video? I'd be interested to know as well. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.